I'm going to move to the last question and give candidates two minutes to answer. What do you think is Brighton's biggest issue? How would you resolve this as an MP? <coughs> I think Brighton's biggest, one of Brighton's biggest issues is housing. Uh, the lack of housing, the lack of affordable housing, the lack of decent quality out of housing, and the incredibly limited supply we have. I'm really, really upset that our property here gets advertised in London to turn people there in, into Brighton when local people here cannot get places to live of a decent standard. I want to see more houses built. We're committed to 200,000 a year. I want to see reform of the private rental sector, which is the largest, one of the largest outside London. 33% of our housing is private rental sector. We've committed to three reforms for that that are really important. Longer term tenancies, a cap on rent increases, and an end to rip off fees that letting agents charge many people in this room and beyond. Um, I also want to see a regulation of quality of housing. We've had a little campaign, some of you were at a meeting with us a couple of weeks ago, on the quality of housing in the private rental sector. Damp, windows that don't close, uh, repairs that aren't done. We, want, we need to address that. So we've proposed here in the council to have a landlord of registers, uh, no, a register of landlords, so that we can monitor the quality of provision and ensure that only those who meet those standards are actually able to rent their properties out. But on the link to that, there's another concern of mine, which is about um, violence against women and the housing choices that women have if they have to live with violence. We're currently seeing refugees in real danger, their funds are being cut, it's something I want to see addressed. We have promised to commit more, more money to that sector and we'll fund it by ending um, PCC's Police and Crime Commission posts and their teams. So I want to see that all done. It's absolutely essential that people have somewhere decent to live. Again, as I'm a human rights person, there is an international law protecting and defined right to, to housing. It's essential for people to go to work. It's essential for kids to be able to sleep in decent conditions to, to study properly. It's critical to enabling us to fulfill ourselves in the rest of our lives. I think it affects you, it affects families in the city, it affects all of us. So it's got to be a priority in our lives. It's a task between housing and education. I mean, housing is very, very important. I'm a bit worried about how all the parties at the moment are trying to pull over each other to commit to building all these houses. It's right in terms of the relationship between supply and demand, but I, I do worry that so many of them are going to be uh, on land which is just inappropriate. I mean, the big problem in Brighton is where do you build all the new houses? I mean, do you build them around the edge? You've got the sea to the south, you've got the uh, national park to the north. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult, but um, I actually think that I would trump it with education because I believe that the big, one of the biggest issues is that it's all very well putting money into early years education, which is what this government has done. The Lib Dems have really pushed the pupil premium because we work on the basis if you meet a child's needs between three and seven then they will handle more as, you, uh, as they move up the educational system. But you've got to have the right schools for them and in Brighton we desperately are lacking a secondary school, and uh, you can't just keep on building a couple of extra classrooms on the edge of uh, existing schools. Now, uh, that's going to have to happen through local decision making, uh, whether you focus on King's House or other sites or whatever, um, but what you can do nationally is uh, ring fence the education budget. And we have pledged, or we will pledge in this election, to ring fence the school's budget, because that is so important. We talk about from cradle to college, we believe that all aspects of education, including the often forgotten further education, 16 to 18, it's a very, very important section which Lib Dems in government have ring-fenced so that you actually provide that gateway into higher education and also provide a safety net for people who come out of school at 16 without um, uh, as much education as we like to think they have. So I, I think that guaranteeing that doesn't provide a missing school in Brighton, but it does actually create conditions for that to happen with good cooperation at the City Council level. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah, um, the priority for Brighton, as far as the Conservatives are concerned, is to end the green experiment that it has endured for the last five, four, five years. Um, I agree entirely with Perna that more housing is needed and uh, with, with Chris on the question of a further education. Uh, the Greens promised a secondary school, it never happened. Uh, we would uh, obviously would wish to see more free schools. We believe that they are an important component in the education.
age group mix and free up uh, school places in the state system, in the wider state system as well. Um, Caroline, uh, a very compassionate, committed MP, uh, and I respect her for all her work in Parliament, but she is still pursuing a left-wing agenda of her own choosing, largely. Yeah. <laughs> The city itself does not have the strong voice in Parliament that it needs. International and national issues are getting the attention. I would be a strong voice for Brighton Pavilion. In terms of the council and the local priorities there, we would see the city made to look beautiful once again. It's become an absolute mess. There would be a, a, an efficient rubbish and recycling collection. Again, something the Greens should have delivered and ended the dispute with City Clean. That hasn't happened. That would come in uh, very quickly. We would mutualise City Clean to be uh, effectively like John Lewis, where the employees would have a direct say in their own future, we'll be able to commercialise some of the contracts as well. We would have an end to the ripple of parking charges and the ridiculous congestion we see in the centre, which is strangling business in the lanes and other areas of the city centre. We would make the city generally more business friendly overall and not be opposed to business in principle, as I'm afraid some of Caroline's Green colleagues seem to be. And finally, for all of that, we would deliver core services and would not raise council tax for the people that live in the city, despite what the Greens want to do and Labour often sustaining and supporting them by either voting with them or abstaining. Uh, we need some common sense conservative policies coming back to make Brighton a great city once again. I feel sorry for Clarence, really, because he really does keep trying, doesn't he? The part of it is, uh, it's so hard to sum it up with one point, but I would sum it up with one phrase. A dereliction of duty. You've all been betrayed. So I have to say that younger voters here, well, it's partly your fault because you're not registering to vote. So go out and register the vote and have some influence. We need a lot more democracy here. <laughs> We need to have our needs met, and they're not being met. There isn't the proper housing, there isn't the inspection of houses and uh, flats to, to rent, there isn't the proper supervision of how landlords are behaving, there isn't a proper system to separate walkers and cyclists and motor vehicles so that they're safer. Now, it's a long-term project, but we can separate different roads for different purposes without spending a lot of money to say, well, that's for walking, that's for cycling. That's the car. Keep them all apart, make everybody happy and safer as far as we can. Where they do have to cross, we can work on a system to try and make sure that they're safe. Possibly tunnels, overhead, whatever, all kinds of ideas. Even cable cars have come up with ideas. We need more housing. The danger there is we've got 17, pushing 19,000 people who are homeless in this city. The problem is if we build all those houses, we'll just attract more people from around the country. So we need to say if you've got local links, like you're coming to this university or you've lived locally for a long time, you take a priority. So there are so many areas, 30 seconds, which we need to look at. The place is going derelict, as uh, Clarence says. The, uh, the older buildings, the ones that attract people here, have uh, started to look very second rate. The streets are looking dodgy. We need to spruce up the bits that attract the um, tourists. Because without them, we don't have uh, any income in another city. This Brighton is not on the way to anywhere. It has to be an attractive place to go. It needs to be like San Francisco or uh, Sydney, Australia. We need to make it an attractive place to attract business to as well. Because that will be money in the Put a stop sign up. Okay, so one of, the, one of the biggest issues facing the city, and for me, it's a toss-up between inequality and housing, but actually the two are incredibly related. Let me just say a few words about inequality first, because although, you know, when people first come to the city, they can go to the lanes and the north lane, and it's very trendy and great, and it is, but there also are real areas of serious poverty and deprivation in the city, and I think the inequality in the city is something that is shameful and needs to have more work done on it. I'm very proud, actually, that the Green-led administration has made the living wage such an important part of its manifesto. One of the first things uh, they did on, on becoming the, uh, the administration in, in the city was to um, operationalise the, uh, the living wage commission. Um, they now have more private sector companies signed up to the living wage in Brighton and Hove than in anywhere else in the whole country outside of London. 
Something else they did was to, to really take inequality seriously and to we put the, the money where their mouths are. So, for example, within Brighton Host City Council, one of the very first things that the Minority Union Administration did was to operationalise a policy which is about reducing the differential between the highest paid and the lowest paid in any given organisation. So the chief executive and the leader of the council took a pay cut, and some of the lowest paid people in the city, to, in the city council took a, a pay increase. Those are practical measures that people don't know enough about, that are positive in terms of the Greens putting into practice what they preached. When it comes to affordable housing, absolutely, we absolutely need more affordable housing, but we also need to send, stop selling off council homes. It is nothing short of obscene that we are set, selling off council homes at the same time when people are desperate to get them. They're getting sold off, and then they're getting re rented back at a, at a profit. You, you know, this is just madness. What we need to be doing is getting away from the tax relief for buy to let. We need to have properties for people to live in, not for more, more and more financial speculation. We need to abolish the bedroom tax. I agree about a national register of, of landlords. We need rent caps, we need longer five-year tenancies. Um, and those are all things that the Greens have been promoting.